In celebration of Final Fantasy's 35th anniversary, Square Enix decided to make an action game reminiscent of the Souls genre called Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin. This game serves as a celebration for the series and also a prequel to the original Final Fantasy which was released on NES in 1987. As a longtime Final Fantasy fan, I was looking forward to the experience, and after playing the game for more than a month and acquiring the Platinum Trophy, I thought I'd give my honest review for anyone interested in the game. I'll be going over four main aspects of the game in terms of gameplay, music, story, and quality. In terms of gameplay, Stranger of Paradise is an action RPG developed by both Square Enix and Team Ninja. If the game's style looks a bit familiar, it was the same studio that made Neo, a samurai yokai themed soul genre game with extreme difficulty. When it comes to combat, Stranger of Paradise doesn't follow the core mechanic of Dark Souls or Neo. There isn't a stamina gauge that depletes when you attack or dodge. Instead, Stranger of Paradise focuses on a break gauge and MP system. The break gauge in the game is similar to Dark Souls and Neo in the sense that when you block, your break gauge depletes and when it depletes you will be stunned and open for attack. The guarding has two different features in this game. The first type is you can block using the L1 button as a guard or with the circle button which is called a soul shield. The difference between the two is that a soul shield can increase your MP but at more cost to the break gauge. The L1 button can block more attacks with less cost to the break gauge but you won't gain any MP. The MP system allows Jack and the party to use special moves which are vital to depleting the health and break gauge of your enemies and don't cost break, but bars of MP under your character's health. If you deplete an enemy's break gauge, this will leave them stunned, and then you can do a finisher called a Soul Burst, which offers three main benefits. One, it finishes the enemy off instantly regardless of their health. Two, it causes a shockwave to thin out or wall splat enemies for further break damage and 3 restores and increases your max MP. When it comes to build, Stranger of Paradise is different from other Souls genre games in that it's much more in-depth and flexible with many different classes based off the FF series job system. Each job can be changed in-game or in battle and has unique passive and combative abilities that aren't just tied to a weapon. Now some jobs may allow you to equip the same weapons and abilities as other classes but they have specific job abilities that are exclusive to what class you are using. Along with this, there's also abilities you can unlock to use with any class by leveling up your jobs and unlocking them on the job trees. This gives you such a large range of strategies, varieties, and playstyles that give you a lot of freedom to play how you want with a style that suits you best. I really liked this combat system because I loved the freedom. Most of the jobs have a unique playstyle that is advantageous in one area, but not so great in another. Your thief class may be fast and nimble, but won't do as much break damage as the slow and powerful berserker class. To me, this was the best combat system I've actually experienced in the soul genre. I liked how I had so many options and I'm still reworking my build during these endgame content, you know, 200 level missions in the game. This game is much more forgiving as well to players than Dark Souls or Neo. I wouldn't say the bosses are easy, but the game skips those hardcore Souls and Neo mechanics of falling to instant death. For example, in Dark Souls and Neo when you fall off a ledge or you fall into a puddle of water, it just completely, you're dead. You lose all your souls, whatever, that kind of thing. And in Stranger of Paradise, if you fall off a ledge or fall into the water, it just kind of does the Zelda thing where it docks a little bit of your health and you're on your way. So there's a slight punishment, but it's much more forgiving. You're also given two party members to accompany you to help take the heat off you when there's large swarms of enemies or you need assistance with a boss. As an FF game, players might be looking for a certain quality of music found in the main series. Stranger of Paradise delivers on this front by doing rearrangements of classic FF dungeon songs and incorporating its own original music. Every time I died, which was a lot, I got to hear this epic theme called Indomitable. Also, when traversing the levels, I loved the nostalgic component of hearing a song like Find Your Way from Final Fantasy VIII in the Fire Cavern near Mount Gulg.
some tracks were so good actually that they reminded me of the soundtrack to the Matrix trilogy, like the Lich's theme. Surprisingly, the music and, you know, the OST was very good and fitting for a game celebrating the series and its 35th anniversary, so that was a very pleasant treat. Now that I've talked about what I love about the game, we need to talk about where the game is weakest, and that would be its story. Usually in a game series like FF, the story is an integral part of the experience. I was really looking forward to see how Stranger of Paradise would act as a prequel to the original Final Fantasy and how it would tie in, but I gotta say, after completing the game and the story, it didn't redeem or add anything to the original FF. In fact, the story in Stranger of Paradise was such a stretch that with its concepts of world simulation control, character memory amnesia, and retcon expansion into the already established FF1 world, it should have just been its own game not tied to the original. Not only is the story bad, but it's also told incredibly poorly, uh, the cutscenes are sparse and awkward, offering little to the player to understand. The game has hidden lore objects in most of the levels that offer the basic terms and premises, and you have to try and piece together the story. You can definitely miss out on these things. I had to go back in the end game and look up a uh, walkthrough of where exactly I could find them so that I could start making more sense of the story. There's an ending cutscene, and finally at the end of the game when they talk about how they become the iconic villains of the original and how the Warriors of Light will come to enact FF1, it doesn't really make any sense after you complete the game and watch the ending. There are too many plot holes, and even if they were filled, it probably couldn't save the story, sorry to say. Now, this just seems to be a current trend with Square Enix games. Now, I'm kind of going off on a sidebar here, but it was kind of frustrating to deal with this convoluted story because this new trend with games like Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and now Stranger of Paradise, it seems like Square Enix games are starting to focus more on convoluted, unpredictable theory crafting stories instead of just relying on good dialogue, character development, and a followable story. I get that with the games they want to shake things up, but sometimes less is more in my opinion, especially when it's tying into a classic game like FF where it's simply good versus evil, light versus dark. And finally, I want to talk about the quality of the game. I played this game on the PlayStation 5 and I was very surprised how poor it ran. When I first experienced it in the demos, I thought it was just a symptom of it being a beta, but almost in the sense that it wasn't even optimized for the current gen systems like the PlayStation 5 and the Series X. Dude. My game. I broke the game. Holy shit, dude, my PS5 froze. This has never happened before. Oh. What's happening? Uh, accept and report? <laughs> sure, send it to him. Many cutscenes and other levels of the game appear grainy and have these frame drops where there is too many enemies, you know, there's too much stuff on the screen and it starts to choke. And this is a big deal when you're fighting a boss or many enemies on something like Chaos Mode, the hardest difficulty, because if you miss your dodge or your block because of a frame drop or the game choking, that could easily result in death. I don't know if this was a Square Enix issue or Team Ninja issue, or both, but for the company that usually puts out games that perform admirably, like the Square Enix standard, it really came as a shock and a disappointment. So overall, I think Stranger of Paradise is a great action game for those who love the Souls genre and would recommend it to FF fans who want to try the Souls genre experience. But when it comes to the story and the quality, you might want to turn your brain off because it's going to hurt your brain and you're not going to be able to make too much sense of it because it's just that bad. There's not gonna be any sort of redeeming 
aspect to it. So thanks for listening to my review, everyone. If I had to give Stranger of Paradise a number, I guess I'd give it 8.5 for great gameplay and poor story aspects. So I hope you enjoyed the review, hope that helped, and have a good day.